All right, everyone, welcome to season six, episode five. Uh, we left the reaction pretty abruptly, so we can jump into discussion right away. How do you feel? I feel devastated that Hodor had to go at that moment. I didn't want to lose him as a character, the way he's supporting Bran, everything. I just, I felt like it wasn't time for him to die, but the way that R.R. Martin portrays it, it's almost like it was his destiny that that's what was leading up to what he had to do. 30 seconds before that, they were talking about food and you could see the expression in his face and he was so excited. It's like when you get up on Saturday morning and your yeah. mom makes you breakfast and it's cartoons and it's just so innocent and there's still a kid in there, you know? How do you feel? Is this... Oh man, I've cried again. <laughs> or teared up again, man. It's uh, It's hard because he's such a lovable character. Even though he doesn't say much, he's still, you know, Willis a.k.a. Hodor, is such a, you know, you grow to love him. He's the nicest big giant. I mean, it's hard to watch the way that he goes and just the word that he has been saying the whole time and how it, it came to be, right? He, he used to be able to speak, now he can't, and then we find out how that all happened, and you're like, damn, Bran's fault yeah. uh, for many different things. But, you know, he, he did what he had to do, uh, maybe because he was controlled, but at the same time, I think he would have done it either way. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a good point. I mean, uh, all the Starks helpers, they are like Osha and so on. They're very loyal. Mm -hmm. uh, like the Maester as well. They all die for it. But, you know, Holdor, from the beginning, he was destined to hold a door. Destined. He can't talk, like you said. He can't speak his mind. It was just destiny to just hold a door until his death. Yeah, and... A lot of it has to do with Bran not being able to control his his ability and being a little too rash on wanting to, you know, see the past or yeah. whatever. It's a privilege, right? Bran, Royal, Hodor, his name is Willis. He's a servant, right? So there was an episode of Rick and Morty where Rick uh, made a robot. The robot's only job is to pass the butter. It's still pretty sad for the robot, right? But is Hodor a person, uh, like you said, he's the most innocent person in Game of Thrones. No motives, nothing, yeah. just to serve his uh, master. He pretty much carried Bran all the way to the north mm -hmm. uh, on his back, right? And to see him go, you don't know much about him. And you ask, why do you care so much and why do you love him so much? Because he's just an innocent and loyal person. It's very hard. I mean, I was really shocked with the Red Wedding, but uh, this episode... So far, it's the only episode that make me tear up. And the show does a, a really good job in terms of, as you mentioned, building it up, getting you to really feel safe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, and then... And take it away. And then they take it away again. It's so well-deserved. I mean, sixth season, he keeps repeating Hodor. Who would have thought... Who, who can keep that secret for so long? Like, right. who knows about it, you know? Does anybody knows about it? Like, oh, Hodor sounds like hold a door. I think he's going to hold a door. No, there's no way no you can way. come to that conclusion. I didn't even, yeah. You know, it's crazy. And when when you see that transition of uh, the young uh, actor, uh, Hodor actor, it's like, oh, man, it's, it's so sad. He wants Soon to train with them. Him. His mother didn't let him hang out with the kids and, you know, as a servant. And uh, all the way to his death, it's crazy. When it happened to Willis, uh, the young Willis, did he have visions of what he saw in the future or not? Because cause it looked like Bran warged into him while he was there and got into him when he was in the present time at the door. He could see... I mean, I couldn't figure that out, that part. What do you think is this? For me, at first, because I was wondering all the, what was going on, so it looked like he's, he's doing two things at once, and that was he was warged into uh, Hodor uh, in the present, the big guy, and also in his vision, right? But when the whole incident happened, because you see young Hodor's eyes go white, and so mm -hmm. he warged into the younger guy, right? younger Hodor. Mm -hmm. And I guess that, that's what ended up, I don't know exactly what happened, but it seems like him warging into somebody in the past is what caused mm -hmm. that whole issue I, I mean i don't know I'm yeah speculating. i didn't even know that you can work into someone while being plugged into the matrix yeah um you know my interpretation was okay he's plugged in and he's working to uh, willis the young holder and it creates this crazy loop so that's i mean mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm i can't 
it would take me more thoughts to sit down and think about mm -hmm. the all the theories of time travel and so on. But top of my head, maybe some kind of crazy loop going on there. Yeah, I had first thought that, oh, he worked into the young Hodor while he's in the past, mm -hmm. right? But then his eyes didn't go white, mm -hmm. and the present one did. And so that's why I'm, he, he worked into that one. I guess he can do multiple things at once. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, he ended up, you saw the young Hodor mm -hmm. go, eyes go white. Yeah, so this is the result of Bran. It's not very responsible, yeah. you know? It's like, you know, I want to be in my peaceful time. I want to learn more. When he met the Three-Eyed Raven, maybe spend all that thousands of years, maybe carve the rules onto the yeah, tree. Like, something. rule number one, do not fucking let the White Walker touch you. That's yeah. it, rule number one. And do whatever you want to do. Go peep on girls, do whatever you want. Just don't let the White Walker touch you. Yeah, and then at, at that part, it looked like Bran entered the Three-Eyed Raven's vision because he was in a vision. And it, it led me to believe that the three-eyed raven had already seen what's going to happen. The destiny of Willis that led to this. So did he know that the White Walker was going to touch him? And did he know they're going to come? And then Hodor, uh, well, Willis would have to hold the door. The fact that uh, he asked Bran if the White Walker touched you, uh, I assume he doesn't know beyond that. What do you guys think about what the three-eyed raven said to Bran, that you need to become me or something. That's why I'm saying, you know, the three Evan has to write these rules yeah, down so does. people can see, what does it <laughs> mean to I become me? I need to check in for a thousand years. Bran did ask a couple questions about, you know, I don't want to sit in a tree, right? Right, right. right. And then he told them, oh, you're not going to be here sitting in this tree. You're going to exactly. be leaving, right? Uh -huh. And so that's why I sort of kind of agree with you. Maybe he saw a lot of this coming. I mean, he seems to be well in control of his abilities. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I'm all... You're in the same vision as Bran, and you're not telling him to. You're not forcing him out like you forced him out in all these other, mm -hmm. other um, not right. visions, but while well, they're in the past, and well, you just force him out. That's right. Well, he just showed up right next to him, and he grabbed him, and he pulled him out. Well, he he was he was like napping or something, and oh. Bran kind of go on his own to check in. Yeah. Oh yeah, That's when right. he was touched, but during the Hodor thing, uh -huh. right? He could have just pulled him out, make sure that you, not uh, even in yeah. the past. The Night King surrounded. Three Eye Raven already. So my assumption is that in order to pass on the Three Eye Raven power to Bran, he has to die within the Matrix. Ah. I have no idea if it's true or not. You know, because I'm, I'm going back to your question about mm. like becoming me, right? Or have Bran become the Three Eye Raven? I'm all, it kind of makes sense. I'm like, how do you pass on this information, right? Mm -hmm. You're not talking to Bran a lot while. <laughs> You guys are in the present, so maybe it has to be in some sort of this fourth dimension or whatever right. that they're in, where only they can kind of see each other, and of course now in another get, dimension, uh, yeah. yeah. And now the Night King, you know, can actually see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Chris's point really makes sense. I I can see that because, like you said, maybe he knew that if he died in the in when he's plugged in and Bran was there, he would kind of transfer. Uh, like you something? said, the, the rules, yeah. the unwritten rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write it. I'll write it. It's like uh, absorbed the information of the last like day Fight I Club. Mean. Rule number one of Fight Club. Right? <laughs> but, God, Bran, what an asshole. Yeah. Damn it. Well, you know, he doesn't know. Yeah, I don't think he did it on purpose. It's just, yeah, uh, the irresponsibility, right? Yeah, his, um, his rashness to, you know, as a kid. You know, they tell you not to do something. You go, what's the first thing they end up doing? You go yeah. to do it, right? He's always so, been yeah. curious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, same thing happened when he, when he was on the first episode, right? He climbed a tower. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> he was told not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> this makes me think about something <laughs> bigger too. I'm all uh -huh. like, the Night King finds out where he's at, can access to them, and then diverts his whole fucking army to go after Bran. Mm -hmm. How important is Bran? For the Night King to bring his whole army over here instead of going towards the wall, mm -hmm. yeah, that's which true. is the direction that I thought they were marching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know much about what the Night King wants. Mm -mm. I mean, I know they want to kill everybody. So that's what they've been doing. I mean, oh, are yeah. they revolting against their creator? Or are they? Uh, I don't know what they want. Right? Do they want the end of the world? Well, my my thing was that you know. It's these things where they, and then they kind of touch based on it a little bit, that they created this to fight off, you know, man, right? Mm -hmm. They created the White Walker to fight off man. Mm. And so my take was that the White Walker 
was a slave to the children of the forest mm. and it's kind of like what you said and now you know i'm stronger than you i can take over that well that's my assumption i don't know if it's true or not but uh, mm -hmm. yeah that's but my definitely take. a power that maybe the night king wants brand's power who right. knows uh but right. definitely a uh, good point these groups of children of the forest are like maybe the last of yeah. their kind i mean right. brand went back thousands of years they've been living thousands of years and pretty much uh, she blew herself up you know at first i thought there was only one children of the forest until i saw this episode i'm like oh there's a bunch of them yeah yeah, yeah. i might have missed them in the previous episodes but uh, and why not spend that time to make more fireball it yeah. seems like they blew up a fish <laughs> yeah. make more I mean, how many can you make? You should have just <laughs> waited for them to come in just pop, 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 pop. That's a good point. I mean, Bran could have spent more time talking to them, be like, what happened in the last thousand years? Can you just give me some no, no, Nobody points? wants to talk. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, it seems like, hey, you got to see for yourself. So. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, Bran, maybe he'll find another tree that can do that. I remember when uh, they had a tree next yeah. to the river where the maester died, mm -hmm. and then he said, go uh, south. Where did he say? He said, go south. The maester died next to the tree in Winterfell. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Part. Yeah, it seems like the tree with the faces is uh, very abundant in the north. Right. Yeah. You know, Hodor, gone. Three-Eyed Raven, gone. His Summer. teacher, Summer, gone as well. Uh, so a lot of, a lot of people uh, sacrificed yeah. for Bran. Yeah. Yeah, big sacrifice. And uh, Mira, wow, so, so loyal. I, I don't know. Maybe her father, Holland Reed told her to you know whatever you do you have to serve the stark i don't know but wow so loyal and she's a great fighter she's killed quite a lot yeah and yeah. i think it's a lot to do with her brother her mm. brother yeah. had this vision Good point. and or not just vision had explained to her you know we need to make sure that mm -hmm. brand makes it to where he needs to go and keep him mm -hmm. safe as much as possible yeah. i mean at one point she's like dude i don't know what you're doing in there i mean i'm supposed to protect you but what are you doing in there yeah. uh. Yeah, you know, if it's me, I'm like I'm out of here, man. You you can <laughs> hang out in here. <laughs> she wanted to fight. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, she yeah. wanted to fight. She wanted to fight. Well, I'm still concerned though. I mean, there was a bunch of things chasing them. Yeah, yeah. And so, and her pulling, you know, they needed Hordor to pull that yeah. that sled. And now it's just Mira yeah, and pulling uh, Brand. Bran. Yeah. You know, this whole time I was really hoping that they make a saddle so that he can ride a <laughs> summer. Yeah, Summer yeah. is a big dire wolf, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ride them. But they, they travel in group, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And there is another little moment between Jorah and Daenerys. And so he finally confesses his love for her. Right. And then he can't even touch her. It's difficult, man. And, you know, uh, you see uh, Dario. He understands yeah. how dedicated Jorah is. Yeah, hopefully he's able to do what she set him out to do yeah it's just as he rides off i'm i'm like you know could you just give me a dozen men you know like yeah. maybe, maybe some gold so i can find some maester to cure me you know maybe like how yeah. you know stan has had his daughter cured right, cured. right. right. With everybody all the resource could. you have you know hook it up yeah give him a boat very heartfelt but yeah could have gave him some more resources every time i, I see jora he's alone riding on a horse somewhere just by himself you know the situation in Pike is a, very difficult for uh, Theon and I wasn't and Nara. I, yeah, a new villain. Uh, you know, yeah. seems like it. I wasn't expecting him to win the vote after that because he came late. And then <laughs> that's a, that's I a, heard that you. point cracked me up. I'm, I'm like, sorry. I'm like, yeah, uh, you you came late. What's you, this, you missed you missed it already. We already it's, voted. It's, we already <laughs> voted. Like, you can't like reelect. You can't yeah. do the uh, count again. <laughs> you can't do the count. <laughs> Does yeah. he like time himself? Like I'm just gonna wait, and then I'm gonna walk in last minute. Oh. Yeah, but in the end, I felt like the these men are so used to a man leading them. He belittled Theon. He belittled um, Yara. Yara. Yeah. And it's hard to break the wheel. Yeah, it's just that's the culture there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they took too long on the ceremony. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they had all his loyalists. Hey, you, you better come to my ceremony. Yeah, you yeah. better come. <laughs> I, I better see I you there. The invitation. <laughs> and then no one's watching Yara took off the ship. Yeah. <laughs> no. You think that when Theon gave his, he gave like two speeches here, and they were very good talks, and built up the men to follow Yara, you were like, yes, 
they're they're yeah. they're gonna follow her, and then Euron just kind of just smashes it all down. I can see Oma in shock. I say, hey, hey, what? What? Yeah. what? Is that over? <laughs> Dude, I was so excited because I'm visualizing Theon and Yara going down and killing Ramsay. Yeah. I feel like in every episode, there's this visualization of somebody yeah. coming and killing him. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, yeah, but I, I'm glad that they made it out. Yeah, took the best ships. When they left, I'm like, okay, where are they going to go to now, right? And I'm thinking, now we have the map here. So I'm looking, I'm like, where are they going to go? They're going to go up to Winterfell and meet up with John or what? They're <laughs> we, seamen, so yeah. I assume they're going to go somewhere along the, yeah, coast. Along the, coast. the coast. Yeah, We know where you're on. So on. they're over here, right? They start off here, yeah. right? Yeah, so I guess wherever they go, they don't want to go north. <laughs> they, they probably have to go all the way around if they want to go somewhere else, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're gonna have an issue if those guys build boats really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so he wants so a thousand, right? A thousand. How long do you think it's gonna take? But, <laughs> but he's planning on going to meet, you know, Daenerys. You know, someone that trying to be no one is Arya, and she gets another assignment. Yeah. What do you think about her training? Because it seems to me like Jack and Hagar is pretty lenient on her. She mm -hmm. fell a couple of times already, maybe one, twice mission but he gave another chance literally gave his life what do you think they're testing her or do they really want her to be the true faceless man it is testing yes i feel like they're trying to absolve her mind of everything and just focus Become a on faceless man yeah and just focus on that and in a weird way that's how you break somebody away from getting distracted by things so what do you think is this yeah i agree it, it it is testing uh i don't think i think failing is okay uh, of breaking the rules, which is what she did and was kind of punished for mm -hmm. uh, with her vision that you can't do and she's already did it once and apparently he's not gonna forgive it again mm -hmm. And so as long as she stays true to the rules that they have been set in place And so I think that this next test that she has in terms of they get actually give her an assignment to assassinate the, seems the like, actress that's yeah. playing Cersei who seems like you know Very a nice person, person like and so, Arya said yeah, yeah. But this organization of House in Black and White and Faceless Men, I guess they're assassins, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they go to, it's almost like cell swords, I guess. Mm -hmm. People pay, they kill. Mm -hmm. uh, but so what I was seeing is they gave her this assignment on purpose because mm -hmm. you get to see, to really see, she keeps saying, I am no one, right? And then you get to see mm -hmm. when the reaction to when they show Ned and he's being this kind of like foolish sort of hand and how they're treating, you know, Ned, how they're treating, you know, I guess she was okay with how they were treating Robert Baratheon, right. uh, but definitely how her, her father was treated, or being portrayed, right? right? You can see it in her face that she's still Arya. Oh, that's a good right? point. Maybe they set all that up. Yeah, yeah. and okay. so that's my feeling. I thought you gave her this on purpose because you know that this is happening there, mm -hmm. and you actually get to see her reaction. Yeah, uh, good point. I didn't know that uh, the House of Black and White keep track of where <laughs> he's Ben goes, right? Yeah. Now, so based on what I see so far from Jack and Hagar, how nice he has been. Uh, again, he might have died a long time ago, right? Maybe this is totally different person with his right. face. That aside, he took like dozens of lives for, for right. his, right? He took, well, he gave her three and then she asked for more. <laughs> right, at um, Heron Hall, oh, right? Yeah. You know, and I agree to you to some extent. I think that these are a test as test and research on Arya's part. Mm -hmm. Do I want to be a faceless person or do I not want to mm -hmm. be a faceless person? And uh, the girl gave her the option. It's still not too late to decide not mm -hmm. to be, right? Mm -hmm. And so I still think she has the option to be a faceless man mm -hmm. or not. And so it just depends on how this training goes or yeah. this tests, I would say. We hope she doesn't become a faceless person. I mean, we hope she Keeps still a Stark, identity. right? Yeah. Keep her identity. Because I felt like she doesn't need the mask. Just just yeah. leave now. Leave yeah. now. You got good karate skill already. Yeah. You can kick a lot of ass. Well, I, I hope that because if you're a faceless man, you're no one, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're obligated to... Decline. To, yeah, to assassinate whoever they tell you to assassinate, whoever pays. And that basically wipes out her list of people <laughs> that she needs to kill. Right. And I'm like, oh man, I really want to see you kill those people. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Arya got to see her sister in that play. But Sansa is actually in Castle Black with John, and we get a little bit more planning, right? They, they have like their own little council yeah, at they got Castle, Castle Black. Council. Like Chris mentioned last episode, uh, Sansa is growing on me. She's not afraid to say what she's thinking, and what she's thinking is thought out, and she has evidence. 
I didn't like the fact that she lied, <laughs> but I can see where that comes from because she doesn't uh, she doesn't know how that could disrupt everything. I'm trying to think if John even interacted with the little finger ever or anybody there. No, I don't think yeah, he has. So uh, maybe she just doesn't want him to be portrayed as somebody that can be trusted because um, she broke ties at that moment. Mm -hmm. So if she mentions him, then it looks like she's a hypocrite. So it's possible. Yeah. yeah. But um, but no, I'm, I really like how she's growing and John and I just hope her and John never separate and Brianne too and they just stay together. Yeah, I was really um, nervous when she sent Brianne away, but then she said, oh, I have John. I'm like, oh, yes, that's good. Yeah. She's like, but I trust my brother. I trust John. So I felt really good about that. John didn't really say a lot. He just said he needed a lot of men and that was, was the one kind of like formulating so, some sort of plan and... Sansa it was mainly Davos and Sansa, which which I really liked because yeah. she understands the North much better mm -hmm. than almost anybody there. And, and they both have skills that complement, right? Mm -hmm. Davos, Sansa, and uh, you know everyone at the table. Yeah, and no, it's it's great because they all have that common agenda right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, uh, that's that's a really good point. A common agenda mm -hmm. compared to you know uh, <laughs> the King's Landing. Cersei has her own agenda, yeah. trying to get people to follow, but not really. Yeah, no, and I, I think because Tormund needs to participate, even if he, you know, if he didn't want to help John, because because his at people all, are behind the wall now. Yeah, right. his people are behind the wall, and we've already know that. Regardless, th that that letter that Ramsay sent last <laughs> episode didn't just threaten <laughs> John; everybody, yeah, it threatened pretty much everybody. Well, you're kind of stupid, Ramsay. You just got everybody against you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Tormund will go wherever Brienne goes. <laughs> like, oh, guys, let's go follow her. <laughs> that dude's creeping her out. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, Brienne, she's asking Sansa why you lied to your brother. Uh, why are you sending me away? She so, trusts John for the most part, but doesn't really trust Davos, Melisandre for mm -hmm. obvious reasons. They're the ones that were behind Stannis mm -hmm. and that demon baby shadow thingy. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. she's currently disturbed by Tormund, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which brings me to, you know, I, we didn't mention it in the last episode, but uh, what was it? Brienne confronted Davos mm -hmm. and Melisandre regarding, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I don't like you guys. You guys did all this bad crap with black magic. <laughs> it's like, it's like I, I saw you hang yeah. out with bad kids. You guys <laughs> smoking uh, behind the gym. I know who you hang out with. Yeah. <laughs> which Poor, Davos wasn't involved. It was all the Red Priestess. <laughs> Inclusion by association, I guess. Yeah, no, so uh, I like her character. She's very upfront, r doesn't care who it is. She tells you, tells you yeah. it like it is. I, I feel like Davos should go with her to Riverrun since he knows the Blackfish guy. He, he doesn't know he him. Doesn't know him. He, knows oh, he, knows how, him. he knows the uh, name, but I, they've, I don't think they ever met. Yeah, I think he knows of him and his, um, his reputation. Yeah. But if uh, Davos, I mean, for me, like Davos to go and try to get an army to come, he's mm -hmm. very convincing. Maybe oh. Brienne will just be like, I'm here from... Lady Sansa, Queen of the North, uh, we need your help. <laughs> <laughs> no, possibly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and Melisandre is also part of the council. It's just great. Yeah. Uh, you have power, you have good advisor. You can, I, I, I know we have bad taste from Stannis, but I feel like you need some magic in this world to help you a little yeah. bit. You know, it's interesting, speaking of Melisandre, she's sitting at the count. She's not saying anything yeah. compared to when she, yeah. she <laughs> was in Stannis. the background. Yeah. <laughs> when oh, she was right. with Stannis. And which is interesting because going back to the last episode, you had Davos asking Melisandre, uh, Melisandre a few questions and she said that uh, John is the prince that is promised or whatever. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, he, uh, and then he asked her, oh, but you said... <laughs> Stannis was the prince that was promised. Yeah. And then there was another thing that she uh, or that Davos asked, what are you going to do now? He said, I'm going to do whatever John tells me to do. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. I love it. Her face expression is like, uh, I'm wrong. This guy is actually the one that's supposed to be uh, the prince's promise. Yeah. And yeah, it's great. And uh, you know, the first priestess that talked to uh, Tyrion and Varys uh, said that, yeah, my some priestess can um uh, can be wrong, can miss, uh, can be wrong, right? Yeah, we're human. It makes all sense that maybe Melisandre is, you know, misunderstood the signs or whatever this whole time. Right. Yeah, but that means there's somebody still wrong, right? Because <laughs> Melisandre said that John, Prince Thaddeus, promised, and 
this first priestess said that Daenerys is the one. I'm like, okay, yeah. so good who's point. the actual one? Yeah, good point. Maybe, right. maybe the priestess should meet up and have a chart of <laughs> the ones I got right and wrong. You mentioned last time that the Greyjoy uh, died. He was the third leech. And oh, I'm yeah. like, okay, so one for the Red Priestess. Oh, yeah. Stannis died. <laughs> they need to stink up. They need, they, need, yeah. they need to, you know, get together, do some... Uh, Video chat and, and you know get this thing clear out. Who's the prince? Who's the who's the one to promise? Get right. your prophecy straight. Uh, and I, I think it, it's all open to interpretation of what they see in the flames. I guess maybe maybe. Right. And uh, you know one thing that I did see because he confronts the bread priestess is like you said and like and we know why he hates sorcerers. He hates yeah. magic. He hates all that kind of stuff. But she kind of puts him in his place. Yeah. And you can see that he's kind of frightened a little bit by her yeah so i'm wondering what the fire said to him that he's pretty scared I've never seen yeah. him like that before yeah. and not just that how did she know right i'm yeah. thinking in my head i'm like was she there or did they have a priestess meeting and they say oh let me tell you this story because it seems all... like they know a lot for right. example miss fontra knows about ikrit yeah ikrit said that's hey right. john you john know nothing right that's so, right it seems like they see something or yeah. know something somehow yeah. they ha they seem to have a lot of information, but bits and pieces, maybe? Oh, that's maybe? a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about the Ingrid thing, because she was looking in Varus' eyes, maybe, you know, she maybe. conceived in the past, and she picked that little thing mm -hmm. up. Well, so. and, you know, Melisandre did the same thing with yeah. Arya when they met, too, so it's all kinds of crazy crap yeah. going on with <laughs> those Red Priestess. Uh, well, I guess, I guess we can go back to Castle Black. They're on the move, right? Castle Black. Oh yes, they're heading yeah. out of oh, yeah. Castle Black. Finally, God, I, yeah. uh, I've been waiting for John to leave Castle Black for so long, you know, uh, so he can do, you know, more, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like he's got his work cut out for him. He has to go talk to a bunch of people. Hopefully, they follow him. And I love the moment. And you know, uh, put aside what information that Sansa didn't give to John. The fact that she made him a cloak, oh man, so touching, right? It shows their bond, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of relationship in Game of Thrones where we end up betraying each other, right? It, this seems very real to me. Right. Because who else do they have, right? Who else yeah. do they have? Um, I, it's just a great moment. And I think it's all because, you know, they've been through so much yes. separately. And now they know that they're together. They have to stick together to, ha to be much stronger, mm -hmm. right? He doesn't have any other purpose right when John prevail is to protect someone right so right. I feel this is great for him you know this is definitely great and I'm glad that they're on their way to build that you know army with the wildlings uh, a little bit of comedic relief as they were leaving right and they're like who is it a couple of the Night's Watch come to Ed and like hey Lord Commander should we close the door <laughs> I'm not the Lord Commander. I, I love Ed. Man. He's one of John's most loyal friend and very strong. They're in every battle, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, they have no chance against the White Walkers that are coming uh, after Bran. I mean, I would think that's where they would go next. But, like, do they have a destiny that they're leading towards to, but we just can't see it? Maybe their destiny is greater than we thought. Uh, they have bigger play in this game of Thrones. So. You know, one of the, what the Red Priestess said, know that Varys or oh, with Tyrion and Varys they mentioned about the greater war mm -hmm. right and, mm. and what that means they probably don't know what that means Tyrion mm -hmm. was like yeah you sure whatever <laughs> 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 I just need you to preach but, yeah all in all a very sad episode uh, but a great episode we'll see you next time thank you so much for joining